Hi, I'm Christina. I'm Maya from, from Book and Dreams. Dreams, and welcome to a new video. We gather here today to talk about <laughs> our uh, favorite books of 2022. So uh, I read a lot of books this year, so I decided to categorize my favorites into three categories. So one being fantasy, the other being science fiction, and the third one being um, romance. Uh, uh, Christina read a bit less than me, so she's gonna add her books where they fit, I guess. Uh, um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of tag along behind her like, <laughs> selections. I'll just kind of pop in. Okay, good. So uh, let's talk about the fantasy books that I really enjoyed this year. So first of all, two uh, honorable mentions are actually two series that I started and finished this year. One being The Great Coats by Sebastian de Castell, and the other being The First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. Both are just really, really awesome fantasy uh, series. The first one deals with like um, musketeers getting into trouble type of thing, where we follow uh, three different uh, friends and... I mean, trials and tribulations Shunzo, throughout the yes. series uh, while they try to honor their dead king and his legacy. Yes. We have uh, reviews. Re reviews of three of the books because kind of I gave birth in between <laughs> the third and fourth. So Yeah, and we didn't, we didn't get around to we filming that. No, Are no. we going to do that? Probably not. We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, so you can check out our thoughts down below uh, or in the cards here. Uh, the second trilogy was uh, part of the... Joe Abercrombie read along, which I limped <laughs> after everybody else had just read the first trilogy, but really a really great example of uh, grim dark fantasy with uh, characters who go through peaks and valleys of likability, which make the book very interesting because you root for one character and okay. then they do something so stupid and horrible and you're like, okay, fuck that guy, let's let's move on to someone else. So yeah, it was a really fun read. Uh, definitely check those out. Now let's go to the three books that are like top. Of my fantasy pile. So the first one being Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo. This is book two in uh, her Nikolai trilogy. Yes. Overall a books, book I believe um, three plus two is five plus two is seven. <laughs> book seven in the Grishaverse uh, universe uh, where uh, basically I, I can't tell you shit. So the Grishaverse yeah. is a, a universe where we follow the Grisha who are like um, witches with various elemental powers and in the world that they live in they are used uh, for conquering and stuff and so during the first trilogy we follow let's just say one part of the continent where you know uh, the Grisha and under the rule of the Darkling are doing stuff and then you have the Six of Crows uh, duology where we follow Kaz Brecker and his friends as they go around uh, robbing stuff, very cool. Yes. And then the Nico Nikolai duology, we follow Nikolai, uh, who... Um, sp is it spo Okay, so we find out in the second book of the whole universe that he's the king of... So of is he Ravka? Mm -hmm. See, I don't remember. He's the king of something. So we follow his story, and something really horrible happens to him in the first trilogy, yeah. and that is sort of dealt in his duology with also other characters that we meet throughout the whole yes. thing. Uh, the, this is the finale of the whole universe, I believe. I think there so. will be. I mean, she, I, I think she said uh, the author said that she's going to write another book uh, with Kaz and and his friends. Oh, okay. Uh, but right. you know, this this last this is like the finale of the whole thing. So basically, you meet everyone you've ever met in this whole trilogy, which was which 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 was kind of fan servicey, but it worked for me. I really yeah, enjoyed it, it. It was awesome. Yes, the audiobook is so well done. And I enjoyed it so much, listening to uh, the narrators just do a fantastic job with their vaguely Russian accents, <laughs> and the, which yeah. made everything sound so sarcastic. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the books uh, that I really enjoyed this year. The other is Legends and Lattice by Travis uh, Baldry. He wrote a very, very cool, cozy fantasy in which you follow an orc, ogre, or something. Orc. Orc? I think she's orc. Ogre, no? Jesus Christ, I read it literally like a month ago. Right. No. Basically, uh, we follow a character who decides to leave behind her warrior way and open a coffee shop. And there's lots of discussions about uh, coffee and and sweets, sweets and and coffee pizza, bagels, bagels, <laughs> and cinnamon rolls and such. Cinnamon. And for a person who doesn't really do cinnamon or you know coffee or anything like, I've found it so enjoyable. I read it, yeah. I think, uh, on um, summer vacation, and it was so good. It's like, it just, it just, I read it at the right time, and I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it has a great cast of characters. Mm -hmm. Like, there's fun, like companions, fun family. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just cozy. It is cozy. It's really fun. Uh, and the last, <laughs> last 
set of books. It's actually an author I want to talk about. So uh, in October or November, I discovered T. King Fisher and read basically everything she ever wrote in the fantasy genre. I have like several books left, but basically I read Sword Heart. I read uh, any, everything in the White Rat um, world. I read the fantasy romances, like everything. And I want to just point out Sword Heart. I want to point out Clockwork Boys and the Wonder Engine and Paladin's Grace. All really, really great cozy fantasies, romances with, you know, wacky characters and, you know, a very simple plot. When you read a lot of them, you sort of discover there's a formula. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of samey, but I really do enjoy the writing and I enjoy the characters and I always enjoy the romance, whether it's like front and center or in the background of the story. So really, really fun, fun author. And I'm really looking forward to reading anything else she ever writes. Okay, so uh, continuing on the cozy train. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite books of the year was uh, The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I'm obviously a bit, a bit late to the party. <laughs> Because I think this was like popular like a year, two, two, two years, years ago. ago. But I read it uh, at the beginning of the year, I think, and I absolutely loved it. It was so perfectly, like everyone says, wholesome and just heartwarming and nice and positive and just, just like overall positive, happy vibes. So this is the story of Linus, who is kind of like this clerk in the department for magic, in charge of magic cool youth and he goes off to like this island uh where there's a home with six dangerous children and he has to discover whether they are going to kind of destroy the world and whether it is worth keeping open the home there he meets uh like their guardian mm -hmm. uh arthur pernassus and he kind of through the book falls in love with the place with the children mm -hmm. with arthur like, with everything that surrounds, he kind of gets out of this kind of bureaucratical shell that he has been in, like, following the rules, just, you know, blindly not looking at the whole picture, and it's just so beautiful to read. So, this is my first one. And now to a darker side. <laughs> so, I don't have the book, but I read Dark Borders by Catherine Arden, which is the third book in the Small Spaces series, uh, which is like a middle grade horror book. And I'm in the very, very like minority here because I loved Dark Borders. Mm -hmm. Most of the people didn't enjoy it, but I'm like literally very scared of water. <laughs> I can't <laughs> remember what were my thoughts on that. I think you were like on a meh. Like on the, like something like yeah. in the middle. Okay. Uh, but anyways, so uh, in this uh, kind of series, we follow Ollie, Coco and Brian as they're trying to fight the smiling man. And kind of each uh, story has a different setting. You know, you like the first one is like uh, pumpk uh, pumpkin patch or something like that. Yeah, so scarecrows scare and stuff. Then you have like a haunted hotel. Mm -hmm. And this third one is they get shipwrecked on a like an island, deserted island, that is surrounded by fog, nobody knows about it, but it's on a lake, so, you know, it's not like in the sea or anything. I read this, I'm like, cool! <laughs> like, I, yeah. I read this, I read this. Yeah. Right. Uh, and ba basically they get attacked, attacked by a lake monster and they end up shipwrecked. And I absolutely loved it, but, but I think... It was kind of shocking though. Yeah, but the thing is, um, uh, I think um, you love the story, um, like, depending on what scares you the most. Mm -hmm. And, like, here, like, ghost and stuff, okay. I'm like, I'm like, uh, the first scare book was, yeah, I'm not that scared of them. Like, it's not, but water, water is, like, something that, like, my biggest fear is, like, uh, like, an octopus grabbing me by <sighs> my uh, feet, foot and, like, pulling me down and getting round. And, like, I really don't, like, I gen generally don't read any horror water horror bugs because i'm genuinely frightened of those so i think that's why i really really liked it cool the second category is science fiction uh so here also i have three books first one being the kaiju preservation society by john scalzi this who is, is surprised <laughs> is anyone surprised i really i really enjoy his writing it's fun it's it's like you know every, he also wrote it in like the afterword for the story that this was a book he wrote during the pandemic after stalling on this other thing that he was working on and it was supposed to be 
like a pop song of a book, and it really yeah. is. It's so much fun. It's it's a, it's short. It's quick. It's it's just has giant monsters and and fun characters. And Will Wheaton again does a great job with the audiobook. <laughs> he does all of uh, John Scalzi books, and it was such a great enjoyment to read that book, and and I really 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 loved it. Uh, the second book I want to mention is actually uh, uh, two books in a series, <laughs> which I stupidly thought it was done. I thought this series was a duology, but it's not. So oh, okay. I read uh, The Last Watch by J.S. Dooves and then read the sequel the month later, thinking uh, the sequel being The Exiled Fleet, thinking, oh, this is a duology. I can finish a series now. And, and then I read it and I'm like... Uh, yeah, this needs to be done more. <laughs> and then I read, uh, went to like check out the series, and everyone's like mentioning, "Oh, this is for the fans of um, the Expanse series." I'm like, "The Expanse series has nine books. Are you telling me this thing is supposed to have nine books?" Well, pretty much. So, yeah. Uh, in this uh, sci-fi series, we follow basically the first book follows a, a ship which is filled with like rejects from the army. If you've done something bad, mm-hmm. or so, and, and then you have like a choice of going to prison. Or going to this army and be part of this uh, ship's crew, okay. and uh, basically, so you know, it's not it's not filled with cool people. Uh, so we follow this uh, young man who is now because of stuff that he did, and we find out throughout the book what he did and why he did it. Uh, finds himself on this ship, and he's like from a rich family, and uh, he's basically learning how to be responsible and how to you know be a. I don't want to say a decent human being, but sort of grow up. And, you know, take responsibility for his actions and be responsible for something more than himself and his enjoyment and whatnot. And uh, throughout the story, this ship is sort of uh, placed on the divide, which is basically a, you have normal space and then that like spe- different kind of space where time goes differently. There's oh, aliens okay. living there and stuff. And there used to be a big war. And it, there's there's so much stuff happening. There's like politics. There's there's uh, literally they were jumping around in, in space suits. I mean, there were space battles in the second one, and there's a heist in the second one. There's so many things happening. Okay. It's really, it's really big, but it's really, it, it goes, nice. yes, right? <laughs> it goes back, it goes by quickly. It's a very enjoyable read. Uh, so it really is the top of my uh, sci-fi list this year. And the last book I want to mention is the book I read in January. I, I was like, I want to mention a dinosaur book, and that's not Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is, <laughs> of course, top, top, but... Uh, I read something called The Dinosaur 4 by Jeff Jones. I will leave the link to the vlog where I read it. Uh, basically, this is a dinosaur thriller thingy because I was looking for books like Jurassic Park. And Jurassic Park is a sci-fi thriller. A very good one. So I was like, I want to read something like that because I think I read something else which was totally boring. But like, I want to read something like that. So There is a vlog about it. Yes. Uh, so The Dinosaur 4 follows uh, a group of people who went in modern world, met, went to get coffee and... They had the unfortunate uh, unfortunate to uh, to go to a coffee shop that is placed underneath a science building where they did uh, science experiments with time travel and they activated their machine and the whole building basically went like millions and millions of years in the past where you know dinosaur lived so they find themselves in this jungle and whatnot and suddenly dinosaurs are around them and they have to survive and like most of them get eaten but you know <laughs> or killed in different ways there's a whole basically they have a T-Rex I think it was a T-Rex like following them around and like ki- just slowly like <laughs> killing what I mean it was so fun it was such a fun read it was so good um yeah so that's definitely my top five I read uh, my top three I guess but it was so good it was so much fun I really really loved it <laughs> okay so um I uh didn't read a lot of sci-fi I can't really remember how much sci-fi I read uh this might be like the one or two I read but um uh it it's still with me like I keep um, kind of remembering it and it's uh, it eats us from the inside by Antonia Mejnaric she is a Croatian author and this is a book in English so if you want you can kind of purchase it and get it online so this is a story about the small Croatian seaside town Karlobag uh, where uh, something weird is happening to the people to the water uh, how weird like, are they getting uh, eaten or...? Uh, so, the people are getting uh, sick and sickly. So, basically, the town has become a ghost town. Nobody Ooh. lives there anymore. Okay. Uh, and, like, the water has this kind of weird... Um, are we talking seawater or...? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, like, 
algaes or stuff like the red you can see um, on the on cover. The cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we're following our main character. She comes back with her wife to Karlbag uh, to see her father, who is really, really, really sickly. Mm -hmm. And we follow her as she kind of tries to deal with her father and find out what is actually happening. Is she like a, a scientist or just like a... No, no, she just... Do we know what she does? Uh, I think we do, but I don't remember She's what. probably a teacher. I don't think so. But don't she has so. something to do, maybe with books. I'm not sure. I'm okay. not sure. Really, I'm not sure. But uh, it's, a, it's a novella and it kind of... Uh, it's sci-fi in that regard that, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's, like, some things going on. But also there are some fantastical elements thrown in, in there. So that was also really fun. And just... Uh, I don't know. I still keep thinking about it uh, because it... Um, in, is, just, it is it gruesome? Like small parts of it where mm -hmm. uh, it's described how her father looks and how her father's dog looks. Uh, oh lord, okay. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's a really interesting kind of, you know, I mean, it deals almost with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's that kind of thing because there is like this portion where it just mentions creepily, you know, like it started here, but it is spreading towards the next island. Excellent. So, it, it, it's, it's basically like. Almost like a warning. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not like I'm not describing this well, but it was really good, and I still think about it, and like, just you know, just at least check it out. Like, okay. go go see like the synopsis. Yeah. And the last category, I guess, of these <laughs> best books uh, is romance. So uh, first, I want to mention like two series that I've read, that I reread several times this year. Uh, and, and I think I started, I started them this year and finished them and reread them throughout <laughs> the year. So uh, first one being Mid Mishaps by Kimberly Lemming. So this is the books, uh, that time I got drunk and something, Save the Demon, that guy, that oh. time I got drunk and, and he did a love potion and a werewolf. And there you have uh, two short, short stories. Uh, one being Mistlefoe and the other being something else that I don't remember. Uh, basically, it, this is set in a fantasy world where we follow uh, uh, women who have names connected to food. So first one is being Cinnamon, the second being <laughs> Brie, and what was the other one's name? I don't remember. So basically, um, in the first one, a Cinnamon is walking you know, home through the cinnamon fields. Her family does something, I don't know. Uh, uh, gross spices and whatnot in this like medieval village thingy in the fantasy <laughs> world and she mis meets a demon and she throws a cinnamon stick at his head and that sort of uh releases him from this curse that he's been under from a witch i mean it's ridiculous but it's so much fun and he's like oh you've saved me now you're going to help me go kill the witch and you know uh, release all my friends and whatnot and you know and he's like okay and by the way, I really like you, so, you know, they hook up. It's, it's spicy, it has smart scenes, uh, and, and, you know. Uh, the second one deals with a Brie and a werewolf, uh, and... Did they throw cheese at it? No, <laughs> no, uh, she was like, uh, so uh, uh, Brie is friends with Cinnamon, and Cinnamon and okay. I think the guy's name is Fallon, the demon guy. But they were basically together out at, um, at an inn, drinking and whatnot, okay. and some guy was pestering her, and he's like, drink this, drink this, like... I bought you a drink. Okay. And she's like, I don't want your drink. Took it and threw it and hit the werewolf. And turns out there was love potion in the drink. So they're and throwing again. <laughs> yes. And um, and uh, he was and he was like, turned around and he was like, oh my God, you're my mate. He was like, no, this was a love potion. So basically throughout the book, he's trying to convince her. No, no, no. This is real. I really, really like you. Because, you know, werewolves oh, and whatnot, you're my mate. Yeah. And she's like, no, it's a love potion. So And also they, they have to do stuff. There's like an that sounds over, so much, like so it's, much it's, fun. It's so ridiculous. It's so much fun. It's really great. Um, uh, and the sh the Mistlefoe is a very very cool uh, shorter story, which is like a Beauty and the Beast sort of retelling. Not Beauty and the Beast. Is it Beauty and the Beast? Yes, it is. Because uh, <laughs> basically, the girl's father messed with one of the supernatural creatures, not super, fantasy creatures, and he like basically cursed their workshop. They make uh, knives, uh, weapons, and whatnot. Black. Oh. He's a blacksmith. Oh. So he basically cursed them that everything that they make would talk. So when people came to their shop and they would be like, I would like to buy a sword or whatnot. And the sword would be like, oh, you suck. You know, something, you know. So she basically went to the creature to like, okay, can you please just lift the curse? He's, he, and he was like, yeah, sure. But you have to go pretend to be like my, uh, uh, like 
mate or something because they had to go to this fancy party where where dragon that the dragon was throwing for some reasons whatever and basically stuff happens between them it's ridiculous it's smutty it's fun i really really enjoyed them yeah. um the second uh, s- um series that i started finished and reread several times this year is the family by katrina jackson this is a mafia romance series in which you follow uh, two cousins and 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 no, two, two sisters and their cousin uh basically shay zara and what was the third one's name zoe i believe I think it's so. Yes. So basically, uh, Shay goes. Uh, so the, the whole series starts with a, a novella. Shay goes to Italy with her boyfriend, who uh, turns out to be a whiny, whiny asshole. And basically, she leaves him beca- behind while she goes to Naples to like enjoy the whatever scenery and and museums, and then goes to a pizza place where she meets Salvatore, who runs, who is basically the don of the local mafia, and basically uh, they have lunch together, have sex in his office, and then she leaves. And, you know, it continues on from there. <laughs> and um, basically the second one deals with Zara. Zara is supposed to get married to her, uh, like, actor boyfriend. Okay. And on the night of her, uh, before her wedding, finds out that he basically cheated on her with her best friend and a stripper. Then she goes to confront him and basically leaves and goes to her Italian um, honeymoon by herself. Okay. Where she meets, uh, oh my God, what's the dude's name? Julio. Uh, Julio works as a as a infor- not enforcer. He's like the hitman, uh, oh, hitman okay. for Salvatore. And so they together do stuff and have an adventure. And the third one is basically uh, Zara's sister Zoe takes Shay, and together they have to go back to Italy to find uh, Zara because she left and didn't come back, and they're all like worried <laughs> for her. And you know they. Uh, me, basically all of them get together with Salvatore and Giulio and Zara and then we meet Alfonso who is like the enforcer and then Enfo- uh, Alfonso and Zoe have their whole thing I mean it's a whole thing I really enjoy them I, 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 you know sometimes when I'm feeling like not slumpy when I'm losing like motivation and stuff and I just want to read something like short and fluffy and I'm like okay not fluffy it's not fluffy it's smutty that's what I want to say uh, I read that and it's really I read it so many times I really really enjoyed it Oh, and cool. the last book I want to mention is uh, something I read in November, A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. I gave this one five stars. This is book four in the, I have to count, book four in the Courts of Thorns and Roses series in which you follow Nesta, who is very unlikable and basically her journey through healing through the various stuff, working through the various stuff that she has from the first stuff, horrible stuff that's happened to her since the first book and it has so much uh, mental health rep and, uh, you know, working through your trauma. Because one of the things that Sarah J. Maas does really well is write characters that suffer uh, through PTSD for various reasons. And um, it's set in this, you know, fantasy world. So, it, you know, people may have... It basically, they put it in, in like a fantasy romance and sort of to, I don't know, like make it seem less than... Okay. But it's so good. It's so good. I mean, I mean it, it's like 700 pages yeah. of just so awesome things. So much angst. So much, I mean, the smuddiness between Nesta and Cassian is the guy's name. Oh my God. It was so well done. The relationship that they built and how he helps her and her you know, friends that she makes uh, basically deal with whatever trauma they have. And, you know, the sort of background plot of, you know, whatever's happening with this world politically and whatnot. It was so good. I, it was so great. I just really, really enjoyed it. I don't have words to explain how awesome this was. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's very okay. cool. My turn. So <laughs> I have one book to show you, and that is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. So this is the third book in the Kiss Portion series. I have given the first two five stars. Mm-hmm. I have given this five stars. So <laughs> okay, all like, of them. Great. I literally love the series. So here in this one, we follow Anna's son, as uh, she kind of uh, goes viral on YouTube because of a video wh- wh- while she's playing violin. Mm-hmm. And she uh, unfortunately can't cope with this pressure that this creates. And she is struggling with kind of performing the piece again. She mm-hmm. just s- can't seem to do it. And then comes in her boyfriend who announces that he wants an open relationship and kind of her whole wor- world at that point, instead of having support, you know, everything comes crashing down mm-hmm. and she just decides, okay, I know this is not my thing, but I'm going to have multiple one night stands, especially if they're like bad ones, like I want bad boys, everything. 
and then uh, comes in like this tattooed motor guy, uh, Quan Deep, uh, and they have like when I stand, then they have a two night stand, then they have like a three night stand, and then uh, everything uh, kind of um, goes on from there. Because, like, um, although in the previous books, kind of both of the characters are equally represented here, Anna is at the forefront, mm -hmm. and you really get to see um, her struggles with her undiagnosed illness, uh, her struggles with caring for a sick parent, mm -hmm. her struggles with her family and their expectations. Um, just it's a very difficult book to it, read at it, some point, it, yeah. It, like, it is marketed as romance but it deals with such heavy topics mm -hmm. and I literally cried at some points mm -hmm. and I'm not surprised because the author did say this is her most um, personal book that she has ever written uh, mostly drawing from experiences with during the p pandemic with her own father and mm -hmm. caring for him and like just with her family and I think it just you feel that in the book you feel that this is something that is very emotional for the author as well mm -hmm. so I kind of for me it became that emotional it just mm -hmm. drew me in and uh, I'm sorry that there was not more Quan because he's also dealing with a really difficult thing mm -hmm. uh, but together kind of they're just you know supportive and just like I don't know it was just as much as it was really difficult to read it was just a beautiful story I guess for me so that's it all right so those were the books that we really enjoyed in uh, 2022. Uh, if you've read any of them and you want to share your thoughts and feelings, please do so down below in the comments. Yes. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Please the bell button if you want to get notifications whenever we post new videos. And thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.